come down and start in child's pose. We're going to do child's pose for a while. Putting your forehead on the ground. And that's, for me, that's the essence of the pose. Feeling your forehead on the ground. In any year, at this time, we're dealing with pollen. But this year, we're dealing with pollen plus chaos. I think a lot of us have six chakra stuff to work through. If you're feeling unclear, if you're feeling congested, it's normal. But it's a cool thing to breathe with your head against the ground. All right, and then put weight on your forearms and straighten your legs and now we're coming into dolphin pose. And I can reveal now that this little practice that we're gonna do is gonna be mostly moving between these two poses, child's pose and dolphin pose. Dolphin pose, you are doing a downward dog on your forearms. I really love it for the six chakra. It's my favorite six chakra pose because you are hanging out here upside down and your head has nothing to do. You can do some no's and yeses with your head and you can just feel how free your neck and head are here. Even when you're standing, even when you're lying down, your head is doing more than it's doing here. Right here it's doing nothing. And your blood flow is reversing. All right, pick up your right leg and we're gonna do some kicks. I think I kicked eight times on each side. You don't have to kick. If the pose is hard enough without kicking, don't kick. Now go the other way. What we're looking for here is you're trying to get up high enough where you can kind of feel your heart rate go up. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then come back to child's pose. You see what we did there? We got up and like really emphatically reversed the flow of blood back down to our head and that dolphin and then especially with the kicking. And then now we're back in child's pose, connecting the brain to the ground. I'm breathing. In Kundalini Yoga, and I guess maybe other forms of yoga, I don't know, they, they have these sequences that are targeted to hit specific places in the body. In Hatha Yoga in general, we're doing a full body practice most of the time. This is one of the more targeted ones that I have made, and I like it. You're really focusing on your six chakra, the front part of your brain, pineal gland, I'm taking off my sweatshirt, but you stay in child's pose. It's spring and weather is all over the place. We're sliding our arms forward and picking up our hips, coming into a puppy pose. I love puppy pose so much. Your forehead's still on the ground here. It's halfway between a child's pose and a dolphin pose. Your forehead's on the ground, your hips are in the air, and you've got these unique access points all up and down your spine into your neck. Still having that connection with the forehead on the ground. Yes, and now come to your dolphin finding that platform of your forearms. If you haven't done dolphin pose very much, then this is gonna feel like a lot on your shoulders. You're gonna be like, what? How much longer do we have to hold this thing? The answer is you don't have to hold it. You can come down onto your knees back to puppy anytime or into child's pose anytime. But the good thing is that the more you do it, the more your shoulders build and you come to this place where you're actually kind of comfortable here. That is coming if it's not there for you yet. I'm coming up and down on my toes. I just enjoy that stretch. You can do that if you want to. 
And then I'm gonna do those kicks again. I think I did eight. This is Pinchamariasana, the forearm balance. I am a big chicken about it, so I'm not kicking that hard. I have gone all the way over a few times and it's sort of terrifying to me. Now go the other way. If you, you're braver than me, then kick hard enough that you can find the splits in the air, and then you can come to your Pinchamariasana. Yes, and then come back to child's pose and feel your heart beating. I'm fortunate enough to have taught enough yoga and have um, been around yogis enough to know that that pose, forearm balance, is coming for me and I don't have to rush it. I am not there yet and that's okay because I'm totally going to get there. Same for you, unless you're already there. Breathing in your child's pose. Six chakra is my personal favorite and it's also my personal handicap. I, um, I tell my students that most of us have a place in our body where stress will collect. And if you're going through something, that's where you're gonna feel it most of the time. For me, it's head. I get a lot of headaches. Come up with your hips and find uh, puppy pose again. But as I was sort of implying, that place of weakness where stress collects for you is probably also a place of strength. You probably have, um, you know, powers, superpowers in that particular area, whether you uh, admit it or not. All right, come on to your forearms, we're back in dolphin. And your head and neck are releasing and you are feeling free. As I was saying about Pinch Mariasana, the way to the way to do it is to catch yourself in a splits very bravely and then straighten your arms. I mean straighten your legs above you, hovering there. And then I'm gonna do those kicks again. Feel strong in your kicks, but not so strong that you're maybe gonna knock yourself over. I'm doing eight. And then I'm doing eight on the other side. Oh, now we're moving into cat cows. Inhaling to a cow lift and exhaling to a cat tuck. It's interesting, we're getting into the whole spine. We're, we're getting into it by way of the sixth chakra. Kind of focusing our energy there and then moving it down the spine. Still doing cat cows. and then pick up your uh, right arm, roll into your right wrist, and thread that arm underneath, coming onto the side of your forehead. Okay, so this is the same thing, that's your sixth chakra too. The side of your forehead, your temple, on the ground, breathing there. I'm gonna stretch out my left leg and kind of grab it above me, adding this quad stretch onto this twist. If the quad stretch, if the balancey thing stresses you out, don't do it. It's just for if you're like, hmm, maybe I would like a quad stretch here, in which case you, you do it. It's a little hip stretch. Got some core in it a little bit, but the main thing is the twist. The main thing is breathing down into your head. And then pick up that arm that's underneath you and bring it back up towards the sky, which was in the other direction, and then inhale to a cow lift, and exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift, exhale, 
exhale, cat tongue. Inhale, cow lips. Exhale, cat tongue. And then do cat cows to the side, inhaling your spine to a C shape and exhaling to a backward C shape. This is the one that I think they should call cat. This is, I think cats do this. Yeah. And then pick up your other hand, I think it's your left, and thread it underneath and come onto the side of your forehead. And as I said before, let that be a thing. Side of your forehead on the ground. If you want to, you can pick up your right leg and grab it with your right hand. That's just if you're looking for an interesting stretch for your, um, your quad. But the main thing is feeling your breath down into your brain and your brain on the ground. It's pretty cool to be like, let's do yoga for clarity. All right, pick up that arm that's underneath you and come twisting the other way. And then inhale to a cow lift and exhale cat tuck. Yoga for clarity. What if it worked, you know? What if we could just move our body in certain ways and, and have clarity? Keep doing cat cows. And then come to a cross-legged. Take your hands to your knees and inhale forward and exhale back and just making circles around the hips. I like to do this when I come into cross-legged just to kind of ground, ground the hips a little bit. Find the low back a little bit, switch directions. I'm inhaling forward and exhaling back. Take your hands behind you and just kind of open your heart a little bit. Yeah. Good, and then take your left ear towards your left shoulder. And then exhale forward and inhale right ear towards right shoulder. And do that a few times. Keep on breathing and rolling out your neck. Some people like to roll their neck all the way back. I do not. As I've said, this is a sensitive area for me. If you go all the way back, make sure your neck is really happy with that choice. And your head comes to center, pick it up gently. We're gonna do an alternate nostril breathing. And oh, my shot was far away. I don't I pull in I pulled in close, but I'm not sure if you can still see. You're gonna use your thumb and your ring finger. So alternate nostril breathing is so much easier to do than it is to describe. If you already know how to do it, just get into it. What we're doing is we're making an intentional arc of air that goes from one nostril to the other by blocking off alternate nostrils. So for example, you would block off your right nostril with your thumb, inhale through your left nostril, block off your left nostril with your ring finger, and then exhale through your right nostril. And then repeat the process, inhaling through your right nostril, blocking off that right nostril, and then exhaling through your left nostril. I'm going to say it again, and as you can maybe hear, I have to do it in order to say it. 
Blocking off the right nostril, inhaling through the left. Blocking off that left nostril, exhaling through the right. Inhaling through the right. Blocking off the right nostril, exhaling through the left. Yeah. You see, like if you're doing it, you understand what it is. Um, you're making a rainbow of air. It's like an arc, a rainbow of air that goes up one nostril and down the other, and then up that same one and back down the other. It's a rinse. This arc of air is rinsing out the sinuses. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. For each, I'm, going, I'm doing 20 here. And for each one, it's a count of four. You're like, inhale, one, exhale, one, inhale, one, exhale, one. You've been doing it this whole time, and you don't need me to say anything else about this except that I'm going to keep talking. It is, aside from a sinus cleanse and aside from a six chakra stimulator, it is um, supposed to balance the hemispheres of your brain. Most of the ancient yogis speak about this in this way. What a cool thing. So cool. Balance the hemispheres of your brain. Who knows even what that means or how you can tell when it's done, but it does feel good. And when you do this for a little while, it kind of puts you into this sort of super mellow state. If you, like me, live with people who are not super into yoga, this is the kind of thing that's going to make them be like, you are the weirdest person in the world. But little do they know, this stuff works. I'm doing this.
It's different, right? At this point, your head starts to feel a little different. It's different. Yeah. All right. Come down on your back. It's time for Shavasana. Oh, yes.
Okay, start to wiggle around. And stretch your arms and stretch your legs and roll onto one side in the fetal position and stay there. And then push yourself up to seated. Come to a cross leg in. Take your hands to your forehead. Breathe into your sinuses. What an experience the sinuses have had. That was big. Take your hands to your heart. Breathing into your lungs. Guess what? I dedicate my practice to you. Thank you for practicing. Namaste. Namaste.